know it, but there's times that he went to the hospital and visit. I know Sister Frankie and the different ones that were in the hospital. He go see him when he could. And there's some in the church that he's took food to, and he's tried to help. And we thank God for that. So he's already been doing and working as a deacon. Amen. But a deacon tonight should meet the, the biblical criteria set forth in Acts chapter 6, 1 through 7, and 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 13. And I'm not going to read them tonight, but the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ was characterized by his concern for the physical and the spiritual needs of those who heard him. The early church shared his concerns and chose a deacon to this ministry. The deacon becomes the heart and the hands of the church in seeking out and ministering to the needs of those within and without the church. And he's already been doing that. Amen. And we know that the office of a deacon, the concept of deacons is disclosed in Acts 6, if you want to read it, 1 through 7. The choice of deacons is denoted in Acts 6, 1 through 7. The, credential, the credentials for deacons are detailed in 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 13. In Acts 6, 1 through 7, the companions of the deacons are directed in 1 Timothy 3 and 11. The deacon has a unique role relationship and responsibility to the membership of this church in which he serves the deacon's obligation includes spiritual leadership listening, laboring, faithful service, and sound doctrine and he does do all that can you say amen, amen. brother I'd like for you to come forward tonight and stand in front of the congregation if you will and I'm going to ask our associate pastor or pastor to come and stand beside him Brother Bob, if you'll face me just for a few minutes, I want to ask you a question, and if you'll answer me, then we're going to pray for you. My brother, you have been elected by the vote of the elders of this church to serve in the capacity of a deacon. My brother, this church has voted upon you in honor and a great responsibility and selecting you to the office of the deacon. Will you accept this responsibility and strive to fulfill the position to which are called and to promote the interests of the church, to assist the pastors whenever you can do so, which you do, and to look out for the poor and the needy of the church, seeing that none shall suffer, for the material aid so far as in your power to help. Yeah. Will you accept the office of the deacon in this church and promise faithfully to perform the duties required in this office? I'd like to ask our congregation if you will to stand forward. Congregation, I'd like to ask you tonight, will you, the members of this church, acknowledge and affirm this brother as a deacon? Will you encourage him and cooperate with him as he performs the duties as a deacon? If you will tonight, will you say, I will? I might ask you if you will not to lift your hands to the Lord and both of the pastors are going to put their hands on you as we pray for you. I charge you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost that you and ever strive to fill your office to the best of your knowledge and that you will seek divine guidance in all your works. Reach in this way toward our brother tonight, church. Father, we thank you, Lord, for you.
And the church said, Amen. 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 Here's your shift good time. Let's give the Lord a hand as he comes. And minister schools. We thank the Lord for Brother Bob and we love him. Let's get behind our brothers back in church as he ministers to us. Tears, I can't 
Therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, this evil world. We got we can't be conformed to this whole world. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to seek out the perfect will of God in our lives. God wants to use us like Oh, hallelujah. But we got to pay the price. When he was with the disciples and the man come and had his son that was demon possessed and everything, trying to get the disciples to take him to cast out that demon. And they couldn't do it. So they got Jesus back and Jesus said, this comes by prayer and fasting. So if we pay the price, God will work through us when we're a true and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Perfect will of God. For I say, though the grace given unto me, every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think. But think soberly according to God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And I thought about that, how we renew our minds through the word of God. We can be spiritually strong in the Lord. Because he says, that we can put the devils to flight. Yeah. Oh, I thank God for that. And in 1 John 2, chapter 15, verse, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If a man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. Praise God. But he is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We're going to abide, abide forever. Hallelujah. I was just thinking how these churches nowadays have brought the world into the church and they wonder why things they have a form of godliness but denying the power God is power and we have the power to get the devil under our feet we've got to get where God wants us to be there's no limits on God we can go up higher and higher. And oh man, we need to strive to do what God wants us to do. Not what, man, this whole world's in a bad, bad shape. Oh, hallelujah. In Ephesians 4, 21, if so be that ye have heard of him, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man y'all sung that song about putting on the new hallelujah 
Oh, yes, Lord. And you put off the concern for me because the conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind through the word. Hallelujah. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and truth. Glory, hallelujah, and holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man true to his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Oh, we don't have to give the place to the devil. Oh, we, we got power over it. Amen. By the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus takes that name above all names. Oh, the devils quake. <laughs> the demons quake. Hallelujah. They can't stand up. And uh, Corinthians or Colossians third and starting eight. But now ye also put off all things: anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Why not one to another see that ye have put off the old man with his deeds? And have put on the new man. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We're peculiar people. We're not of this old world. We're just passing through. I thank God for that. Yeah. I'm going to make heaven my home. I've got loved ones that's here. I've got a wife that's here. And I love, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Gracious Lord. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Kill your people that you should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. That's Jesus. Which in time past we were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtain mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abundant in abstain from filthy lust that war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that where as they speak against you as evildoers. They may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Titus 2, second chapter, starting with 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that <laughs> denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and glory. <laughs> this is present world in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and birth unto himself a peculiar
you or your people. Zeal of us means that we should have so much zeal towards God's way of doing things. Hallelujah. Good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke and all authority. Let no man despise thee. And I got to thinking about how that how evil the world is and the church is bringing it in. It's all right for a lot of them now that they can take a social drink. I don't believe that. I believe all the drink is from the devil. They took and let people shack up together. It's not right. They're saying wrong is right and right is wrong. But we're not of this world. we got to be holy and acceptable to the Lord. We've got to strive to be what God wants us to be. I thank God for His love and His mercy. And I got over into, into uh, John, the 16th chapter, and I shouted over this. It's just the 16 and 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. That's Jesus talking. We can have peace when we're going through troubled times. We can have peace with God. Amen. Hallelujah. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be oh, a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the whole world. We can be overcomers through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. I love it when it Jesus talks. He's overcome this whole world. He died for each and every one of us. He loves us more than anything. We need to love him and we love one another. We can't be like the world, get mad at somebody, get on Facebook, and start telling things bad about people. That's of the world. That's not a Christian thing that should be doing. God's not pleased with that. He wants us to lift up one another and pray for one another. The word of God is true and faithful. And we got to be true and faithful. But I thought about this about the world. We got to come out of this whole world. This world's not our home. He's, oh man, I'll tell you. The old devil told me, he said, You you ain't gonna preach no more. If you do, you're gonna die. What a way to die. What a way to die. If I gotta die, I, I wouldn't know I'd die. I'd die. But I ain't I've seen ministers and heard about them. Claude Ely. I always said, but I heard him say when I was a young kid, yeah. he said, I want to die in church. And he did. He was a pastor down in Kentucky. Got up and sung a song with that. He sat in his big chair, his big man. He's yeah. the one that, that wrote the song, There Ain't No Grave Gonna Hold My Body Down. And he went back and sat in the chair, and they thought he went to sleep. They went back and checked him. He went on and beat the Lord. <laughs> oh yeah, then the black brother. Yeah, yeah, Tom. Oh man, he's you play that guitar to me, brother. But I love the Lord. This is what I God laid on my heart. We got to stay out of this old world. We gotta we're just passing through. We got to not bring in the world into the church. We come into Praise and worship our Lord and Jesus Christ. He inhabits our praise. I've seen some of you that's had to go through hard things, but the devil did not take your joy. You've got 
captured joy of the Lord. The Bible says that that's our strength. Oh, hallelujah. I love him, and I want to get back to when I used to preach a lot better than this. I was nervous as all get out. I haven't preached a long time. The old devil been telling me, you start preaching, get excited, you're going to die. What a way to die. I'm not afraid of death because I know I've got my ticket punched and ready. And I love this church. I want to see it grow. We're going to see people that might not smell a little good or not dress like we do, but we got to love them and show them the love of God. God wants his church to grow because we're doing what God tells us to do in the Word. And I love you with all my heart. And I love each and every one of you. And I pray that some of this is, is helping. I know it's helped me, especially that, that Jesus said he's overcome the world. Hallelujah. He's our Lord and Savior, and I love him. And I, that, if there's anybody need to be prayed for, that needs prayer, I come expecting a miracle for people tonight. God's more than able. We just got to strive for it. Yeah, brother. God. 